grid is one of the country's major vulnerabilities. The risk to our power grid has to be taken seriously. Fuel cells can help us create a more decentralized system that is going to be less vulnerable to breakdowns caused by human error, storms, and even terrorism. The general trend of decentralizing the electricity business, moving the power plant from the remote central station hundreds of miles away to your basement, backyard, rooftop, and driveway, that all is a perfect fit to fuel cells and the hydrogen economy. The grand vision is to replace every car with one that is hydrogen powered. But when you consider increasing challenges faced by the electricity industry, this vision could become even grander. Within each car is a small fuel cell power plant that cleanly and efficiently converts hydrogen into electricity. This has sparked a revolutionary idea. With millions of mini power plants driving around the streets, Dr. Jeffrey Ballard, a fuel cell pioneer, was one of the first to ask a bold question. Is there a way to harness this power? Four percent of the vehicles in California represent more generating capacity than the entire stationary capacity of California. I mean, that means you've got 25 times the generating capacity of California running around on the streets. With the internet connecting all computers, you can take advantage of programs such as SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. This runs like a screensaver on your computer, but every time you're not using your computer's processing power, you lend it out to help search for signals from intelligent life in other parts of the galaxy. This approach is called distributed computing. Doing the same with cars has been dubbed the Internet of Energy. The Internet of Energy is essentially the ability to park your car while at work, plug it in to the grid, and use the capability of converting hydrogen to electricity to supply power to the grid. The concept is remarkably simple. Imagine the following scenario. A person arrives for work and pulls into his company's car park. Every parking bay is fitted with a simple connector, supplying a small flow of hydrogen. When the car is plugged in, the car's fuel cell is producing electricity. This is fed back into the building, potentially eliminating any need for outside power. And when the person leaves work, they may even drive off with a full tank of hydrogen fuel. If even 4% of the cars in the world were attached to this energy network, the need for stationary power plants could essentially be eliminated. At home while parked in the garage, the car's fuel cell can be used to light and heat the house or produce electricity that can be sold back to the utility grid. This is a fundamental uh, convergence advantage of fuel cells in that you could use your car to power your, your business place or your car to power your home when the car is not used. A full fleet of U.S. cars and light trucks doing this would have about 6 to 12 times as much generating capacity as all the power companies now own. This is a very powerful concept. It's exciting to imagine how profoundly an innovation like the Internet of Energy, running on hydrogen, could impact our lives in coming decades. China has a population of over 1.3 billion people. Over the past decade, the unprecedented growth in China's industrial output has greatly increased the demand for new sources of energy. Coal has long been the primary fuel driving China's economy. You can't run the world's second or third biggest economy for long on 1920s vintage Pittsburgh-like coal technology. China's leadership realized this and in 1996 reversed energy policy to go away from coal and toward uh, efficient use, renewables, natural gas, and hydrogen. This is happening so fast uh, that China is responsible for four-fifths of the 7% drop in world coal burning since 96. 
China's roads and highways are expanding at an amazing rate. Roughly 40,000 kilometers of new roads are being built each year. And on top of that, Chinese consumers are projected to buy more than twice as many cars this year as they did just two years ago. In a cooperative venture with General Motors, Dr. Zhuo Bing and his team at Pan-Asian Technical Auto Center have built the Phoenix fuel cell prototype. Chinese leadership also seems to have a strong desire, which I think is wonderful, to leapfrog right over the West in areas like direct hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. With its superior capability to mass produce, it's likely that China will become a major player in the coming hydrogen economy. Dr. Mao Tsong Qiang is professor of engineering at Tsinghua University in Beijing. We have government support from policymakers. We have many scientists and engineers, and also some business people working together to develop the hydrogen. Over the long term, maybe 30 or 40 years, the hydrogen can give China a large part of the energy it will need. I think hydrogen will make life better for Chinese people. India will soon surpass China to become the most populous nation on Earth. It's an area of immense contradictions. While it has nearly 300 million citizens living a modern middle-class lifestyle, almost three times that many struggle for survival. More than half the population has no access to clean water or electricity. Hydrogen is seen as a possible solution to many of these problems. Dr. Krishna Sapru explains. There are enormous challenges. There's a tremendous scarcity of energy. Electricity, uh, transportation fuel. India is spending a very large percentage of its foreign reserves to import energy. In a country faced with economic and environmental uncertainty, finding workable alternatives to fossil fuels is essential. India has a vigorous renewable energy program. We have something like 13 to 1400 megawatts of wind capacity already installed. We have a fairly thriving photovoltaics industry. Uh, we have a lot of biogas plants which use animal and uh, agricultural residue. The father of the Indian nation, Mahatma Gandhi, said that development in his country should start with the village. If you can develop decentralized technologies, for producing and using hydrogen, then it changes the lives of the dispossessed, the underprivileged, in a remarkable way in every part of this globe. In developing world, hydrogen means availability of energy, which means freedom, mobility, clean air, education, healthcare, jobs, sustainability. In the South Pacific, Vanuatu is a nation of volcanic islands located about 1,200 miles northeast of Sydney, Australia. Its dependence on foreign oil has created an enormous drain on their economy. Prime Minister Edward Natape. When you look at it, 80% of the population live in the rural areas. In most cases, because there's no, no electricity, uh, there are no telephones in the rural areas. So communication is very important. And we feel that if we develop the geothermal energy and produce hydrogen uh, fuel, it will ensure that our students are in a position to study at night and come up with better results. Also in the health centers, there are some uh, drugs or medicine that need to be stored in, in, in a cool storage. That we cannot do right now. Vanuatu has almost no exports, 